Hello guys and thank you for clicking on my channel. My name is A and this is the Real Movie Podcast and today I have one of those controversial podcasts because I want to talk about top 6 worst casting actresses in Marvel Cinematic Universe. Before I get into the podcast I should say that these actresses are not necessarily bad. They were just wasted or they didn't add something to this character that they were playing. And overall, the casting was really bad in my opinion, especially the delivery was bad. And number one is the worst of the worst. And without further ado, let's go. Number six, we have Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet Van Dyne, Hank Pym's wife in Ant-Man 2. Okay, the reason why she is here because I really expected a lot more from Michelle Pfeiffer. First of all, she didn't add anything to Ant-Man 2. I know that she was only at the end of the movie, but that was just like a cameo for me, a big name. And since that movie, we didn't see anything from her. For me, she was really a wasted talent because everyone know that she is such a great actress. I really hope that this situation changes because they can use her in a lot of projects. Especially with the huge superpowers that they gave her. Number 5. Liv Tyler as Betty Ross, The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk came out in 2008 with Edward Norton as Hulk and Liv Tyler as Betty Ross. The only thing that remained from that movie is General Ross, Betty's father, that we still see and she, he's really active in MCU. She was just the worst casting in my opinion. I really love Liv Tyler. I have one of the biggest crushes on Liv Tyler, especially in Lord of the Rings, but she was such a wasted talent and she was really bad in acting in that movie. I really don't know what happened to her uh, during the filming of that movie. But she didn't deliver any line. She was always a damsel in distress. And the chemistry between her and Edward Norton was really bad. Especially that two graphic sex scene almost that we had in Incredible Hulk. That was something that we didn't see in MCU for a long time. I think up until we had the Eternals, we didn't see something that graphic. Anyways, Liv Tyler was such a bad casting for that role. And the fact that she's not in MCU is the proof. Number 4, we have Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia in Black Panther. My comment is really controversial because I really don't like Black Panther, the first movie. It is really overrated in my opinion, for many reasons. And Lupita Nyong'o, an actress who is extremely talented, she just won an Oscar for her great performance in 12 Years of Slave. In the movie Black Panther, she was really, really dull and she didn't do anything. And I couldn't tell that if she was a good actress or not because first of all she didn't have any lines the action sequences were really bad I don't know what will happen in Black Panther 2 and I don't think she will be that involved in that movie as well because I think T'Challa's sister who was a better actress who had bigger role in first Black Panther Shuri will have a bigger part in that movie and I don't know what will happen but Lupita Nyong'o was such a wasted talent in that movie Number 3, Hannah John Kamen as Ghost, again, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man 2. Ant-Man 2 was such a transition movie, it didn't offer anything for me. They could have just released a clip that said, okay, Ant-Man was in house arrest for two years, and then he was dusted, and that's it. Anything, nothing happened in that movie. Ghost was supposed to be a lot bigger, but for me, she just was downplayed. And the actress, as talented as she is, I saw her in other projects, she's extremely talented and, and she has one of those presents in the scene that just catches the eye. But in Ant-Man 2, she was just a wasted talent. She didn't offer anything for me and especially in the end, she was just greatly and gravely wasted. Number 2, Kobe Smulders as Agent Maria Hill in multiple projects of MCU. Actually, when I was watching i think she made her debut in the first avengers i was like oh it's robin from how i met your mother and she's here and she just didn't fit at all with that role she in my opinion cannot be that kind of a badass person 
And uh, we also had another movie in Jack Reacher 2 with Tom Cruise. And again, in that movie as well, she wasn't good for me. And in this one, in an action movie, Kobe Smulders does not just fit for me. In Captain America, she had a bigger role. She had to do a lot of things more than usual in MCU. Uh, but again, the fact that we don't see her as much in these days in MCU especially is proving me right for this comment because she's just not right for the role and number one Brie Larson as Captain Marvel I think it is a universally accepted comment that Brie Larson is a bad casting for Captain Marvel for so many reasons that I, I'm going to name a few of them, but I don't think I will cover everything because there should be other reasons out there. First of all, she does not have a good chemistry with any of other actors on set. They have so many clips and videos that she gets she's roasted by other co-stars and no one likes her and something like that. And I don't know I don't know Brie Larson <laughs> in person, but. I am sure that if so many people, especially Anthony Mackie, has this many problems with her, she's just a bad apple and she, she should not be cast. Captain Marvel in Avengers Endgame played a huge role. She was the reason why the planet was, was saved, because she saved Tony Stark, because she stalled Thanos, she almost won against Thanos, and she's extremely powerful. For such a powerful being, not a person, for such a powerful being, and Captain Marvel also has a great backstory as well. Brie Larson could not deliver anything in my opinion. She was just so dull and so numb, she couldn't express anything. And I don't know if you remember it, but when that movie was coming out, Captain Marvel, we also had the first trailers of the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix who won an Oscar. And I, I remember reading a comment and that was so true and that comment said, okay, Joaquin Phoenix managed to express a lot more feelings in 30 seconds than Brie Larson in the whole movie. And I was, that was truly on point, that was truly right. Because if you watch Captain Marvel, you'll know that this person is not expressing anything. She's just superbly powerful, that the movie was bad. And that movie was just an excuse to show how powerful she is to save Tony Stark. I know maybe the writing for her movie was bad, but still. We also have Iman Fulani these days because Miss Marvel really sucks and Iman Fulani is the best and the best and the best part of that TV show. And we know that if, a, if an actress is good or if an actor is good, the TV show or the movie can elevate. For example, we also, I, I don't want to talk a lot, but we also had Oscar Isaac in Moon Knight. Because Moon Knight, it is my favorite TV show in the whole MCU. But if it wasn't for Oscar Isaac, who knew? No one, maybe no one would have watched that TV show. And yeah, that's my number one. Thank you for listening to my voice. And uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, please comment down below. Do you agree with my list or anything? And uh, yeah, that's it. As always, thanks. Bye.